Praise be to our Lord. Position of prayer, family. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Surely I have turned myself to thee, O Allah, striving to be upright to him who has originated the heavens and the earth, and I am not from among the polytheists. Surely my prayer, my sacrifice, my life, and my death are all for Allah, the Lord of the worlds. No associate has he, and of this I am commanded, and I am of those who submit. O Allah, thou art the king. There is no God but thee. Thou art my Lord, and I am thy servant and I have been greatly unjust to myself, and I confess of my faults. So grant me protection against all of my faults, for none grants protection against faults but thee. And guide me unto the best of morals, for none guides unto the best of morals but thee. And turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals, for none can turn away from me the evil and the indecent morals but thee. O oh Allah, bless Muhammad, and bless the true followers of Muhammad, as thou did bless Abraham, and the true followers of Abraham. For surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst. And O oh Allah, make Muhammad successful and make the true followers of Muhammad successful as thou did make Abraham and the true followers of Abraham successful. For surely thou art praised and magnified in our midst forever. Amen. 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 In the most holy name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came to us in a person of Master Far Muhammad to whom praise is due forever. I bear witness that he raised one up from among us, the most honorable lies of Muhammad, who is now sitting at the right hand of power as the exalted Christ. And I bear witness that those two left among us a guide, a warning, and a grace, and a light for these troubled times that we are in now, the blessed, most blessed grace period that any people could ever have with and in the hands of the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. And it is in these names that I greet you with the greeting words of peace of assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, brother. Praise be to Allah. Welcome to another day, but a special edition of the Master Call. Uh, we have a special guest in wait, and he will be presenting a subject uh, with the title of Seeking Refuge in Allah. Uh, as we approach the departure of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, we are taught that it is going to be a very troubled time. It is going to be a dark hour, a time period that is going to be seen that hasn't been seen before and won't be seen ever again. But on the other side of that darkness is a great light. That's the light of the hereafter, which we all going to be basking in if it pleases Allah that we make it to the other side. Seeking refuge is, of course, in Allah, it's the place of protection. And that's the only way we're gonna find our protection, our covering uh, in this hour. Um, so I'm going to introduce the Imam by starting off with his bio. And hopefully by the time I'm finished, our brother is on. Student National Imam of the Nation of Islam, Imam Sultan Rahman Muhammad currently serves as the Student National Imam of the Nation of Islam, where he oversees the training of Islamic sciences and spiritual development of the believers through the guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He was appointed to his current role in May 2014 and was selected as the first Imam of Mosque Mariam National Center in 2012 by the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Imam Muhammad produces and publishes educational resources to advance Islamic learning and awareness of Muslim heritage in the United States. He published the table talks of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, produced foundational Islamic educational tools like Muslim daily prayers, a learner's guide with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and other publications to advance understanding, education and preservation of Muslim heritage. His early experiences abroad and family tradition of activism has contributed to his focus on building bridges between communities by promoting common understanding, cultural engagement, and social transformation. At an early age, Imam Muhammad studied Arabic and Islamic sciences on scholarship overseas and is the son of the Imam Sultan Muhammad, the first flight captain of the Nation of Islam and personal aide to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, a nephew of Imam W.D. Muhammad, 
May Allah be pleased with him and a great grandson of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. In addition to serving the Muslim community as an educator, Imam Muhammad has special interest in our youth. He currently works as the Arabic and Islamic Civilizations Instructor at Muhammad University of Islam in Chicago. Imam Muhammad, a native Chicagoan, has a professional background in strategic communications and multimedia production, which supports his work as an educator, community activist, writer, and documentarian around social justice concerns as he works to preserve the history of the nation of Islam. So without further ado, if the Imam is here, Brother Imam, are you present? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, Brother Darren, uh, for that introduction and the reading of that bio. Uh, first, we begin. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. These words are our original words in our original language of Arabic, meaning first that we seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the accursed enemy, and we bear witness that there is no God but Allah. We bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came in the person of Master Farouk Muhammad. And we brothers and sisters bear further witness that the honorable Elijah Muhammad is his Christ and Mahdi. And we would not be left alone without divine mercy that has been established and is represented in the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Messiah in our midst. We begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, greeting you with the greeting words of paradise and peace. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam, sir. We first would like to thank uh, our dear sister Anissa Muhammad and our brother Darren Muhammad for the uh, invitation to participate. Uh, we were to actually participate back in the holy month of Ramadan, but uh, everything comes in its time and season. So we thank Allah for all of those that have taken their time today to really, inshallah, uh, go over what is an extension of um, a recent khutbah, a recent Friday prayer service uh, topic that we delivered that, inshallah, will help us to take the seeking refuge of Allah into a personal practice, something that should be practical in our lives. Many of us have concepts of what it means to seek refuge in Allah. We have concepts of Allah Most High Himself. But when those concepts meet reality, we have to understand what it is that we are grabbing a hold of when we say we are grabbing hold to the handle of Allah Most High. So we seek refuge in Allah, not through some spook representation of God that is not material. We seek refuge in Allah, not in the way of some type of uh, object that we hold dear to ourselves like a good luck charm. We seek refuge in Allah and what has called us and what has called us to Allah through his servants. These servants are the messengers of God, the messengers of Allah Most High. These servants we see as the reality has represented them in their histories as prophets of God. But we are not left at the prophets of God, of the past. Allah for every generation is ever revealing the Holy Quran, is ever revealing to us individually through his creation. The means by which we can seek refuge in him. We submit 
to righteousness. And we must, in our submission to righteousness, understand that there are times in which we have not followed straight the path of righteousness. So we must also seek refuge in Allah from wrongdoing and reject not only wrongdoing, but the wrongdoer. We cast out that which does wrong, for it is not originally of us. We, as believers, as Muslims, understand that we have safety in righteousness, safety and security, not only in righteousness, but the law that Allah Most High has established for us as a ruling idea, a ruling compass of our civilization. That when we want for our brother, what we want for ourselves, when we want for our sister, what we want for ourselves, we begin to understand that this is based in love in the brotherhood, love in the sisterhood. So the safety of the righteous is in Allah, but we are clear that Allah has given us guidance to establish safety and peace in our society and in the world. Allah is present in the world, which is why in this hour and time, we must thoroughly, thoroughly be clear on Allah, the God, who came to us in the person of Master Fad Muhammad. For historically, in different times and contexts, we have the guidance of Allah Most High through the scriptures of the Holy Quran, through the examples of prophetic tradition. But we are in an hour in which, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches, in our savior has arrived, that we are no longer in the time of the teaching of prophets, we are in the teaching of gods. Praise be to Allah for this knowledge of self, the knowledge of the reality of God in our midst. We brothers and sisters must seek refuge in Rabbil Alameen, the Lord of the worlds. Allah has revealed two chapters of the Holy Quran or in the Holy Quran, chapter 113 and chapter 114 known as the refuge prayers. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The first of these refuge prayers begins in the name of Allah the beneficent, the merciful. And starts with the word qul or say Allah has given us a blessed instruction through his prophet, peace be upon him. So when we are in situations that require a need to seek refuge in Allah, which are all at, which should be at all times, we say the words, Qul. we're given the instructions to say these following words, Qul a'udhu, a'udhu. I seek refuge. Birab bil falak. In the Lord of the dawn. This is chapter 113. The dawn. Chapter 114. The people or humanity begins as follows. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Qul. Once again, the instruction or command to say. A'udhu, bi rabbin nas, say I seek refuge in the Lord of man or humanity. If we look at these two chapters in the beginning of their first verses, both, both underscore the word rabb, rabb, which means Lord, it means cherisher, sustainer, and it also means evolver. Rabbil Nas, Rabbil Falak. So Allah Most High is the evolver, the sustainer, the cherisher of humanity, of the dawn. 
So, so we must see that there is an evolutionary process, not only in self as humanity, but in self that is going through the process of a new reality being established in our time and era. El Falak, the dawn. The dawn is a process coming out of darkness into light. Kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn. Kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas. Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of humanity. This chapter, as we focus on Surah 114 and Nas, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad under circumstances of trial, under circumstances of a death plot, under circumstances in which he was facing trouble from every direction. These two chapters were revealed to him as a protection and given to him by the angel Jibril as a refuge. When we look at these chapters, particularly 114, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of men, the King of men, the God of men, from the evil of the whisperings of the slinking devil, who whispers into the hearts of men from among the jinn and the men. This chapter, Kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas, malik al nas, ilah al nas, min shar al waswas al khannas, al ladhi yuwaswisu fi sudur al nas, min al jinnati wal nas. This chapter, if we look, is so practical that Allah begins with the entire of humanity and the evolution of humanity the God of men, Rabb nas the Lord of men, but then comes to us specifically saying, men, sharri, waswasil khannas, from the evil of the whispers or the whisperings, fi sudurinas, in the breast or the heart of men. This word sudur in the original language of Arabic of the Holy Quran, is not speaking of the heart that beats in the chest, qalb, in the original language of Arabic, but sudur. The subtlety and the meaning is sudur here is representing the heart of our emotional state. When we are in different times of trial, when we have lost a loved one, when we have seen loss in our property, when we see that things are not just going right. According to our perception, we find whisperings of the slinking devil, whisperings of shaitan, al-rajim, the rejected one. So it is in these verses, in these short verses, that we find Allah Most High really pointing to what we have established in our teachings of the brown germ of self and the black germ of self. Minel jinnati oneness. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speaks of these two, jinn and nas, jinn and men, as two types of human beings. One is immature, one is one that reacts to the call of Satan immediately, heedless. Men is one who is matured in humanity, but in this case, we hear the whisperings of men, those who are high in knowledge, those who are the so-called religious leaders of this world that whisper into the hearts of humanity. So in this beautiful chapter of 114 and Nas, we see that Allah again has taken us from the macro, the, the entire of humanity, 
bringing us to the individual reality of self to the very whisperings that we hear within our own hearts and minds, and then bringing us specifically to those whisperings of not only the, the whispers of the heart, but the whispers among the foolish in the world and the whispers of those that are in power in religion and in society. Brothers and sisters, we thank Allah for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. We thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for giving us a teaching that roots us in the reality, in the reality of life, in the reality of the world of religion, in the reality of self. We seek refuge in Allah because we need safety. We need security. We seek refuge in Allah and we need not to fear any of the whisperings of the slinking devil anymore. We thank Allah for these protective prayers, but prayer is one aspect of the action. Allah in the Holy Quran mentions prayer and righteous deeds, or faith and righteous deeds. We have this word iman or faith, but every time you hear this word to be faithful, almost every time, most often in the Holy Quran, you hear that we should have faith and do righteous deeds. So in our prayer, we may have the action of prayer, but is our action after the prayer that we've made to seek refuge with Allah from the whispers of Satan, do we do something about it? Or are we comfortable with just going through the process and prostrations of prayer, the actions of prayer, the physical calling on Allah? Or are we then doing something about it to clean up our lives from those that are whispering into our hearts? So the whisperings of the slinking devil can cause much mischief in our life. It can cause much turmoil in our lives that give us negative consequences if we answer the call. But when we hold fast to the rule and law of Allah Most High, the protecting friend, we see that there is nothing that can overcome those who place their love, their dedication, their focus in Allah Most High as their true guardian, but without doubt. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad in a table talk mentioned in words that the believer makes a prayer, but he believes the prayer will be answered. So this becomes a command in our lives to self and to self through our actions that begins to shape our lives to be a space of protection, a space of security. As believers, we have no doubt. We have no doubt that if we call on Allah for his guardianship, that he will provide us safety. Allah, we know as believers, is established in our lives on truth. So when we call on Allah to clarify for us any situation that we may be in that is confusing, that we don't know the answer of whether I should do this or whether I should not do this, we have examples and rules by which Allah Most High helps us to guide our lifestyles. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us, and I wanted to read this from uh, Closing the Gap on page 131. 131. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, as we just back up just a little bit, because every one of these prayers, we begin with the words, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is 
written in the interviews with our brother Jabril Muhammad. And this again appears on page 131. One can never overcome the natural obstacles and impediments to one's growth without faith in God. That tells us that this that is in front of us is not immovable, is not an immovable object. So Jesus said, if you had faith, the grain of a mustard seed, you could say to the mountain, be removed, and it would be so. Or you could say to the sycamore tree, be uprooted and be planted in the depth of the sea. Faith in God is the prerequisite to overcome adversity. With a Muslim, when we say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, it is a prayer seeking the help of Allah to help us in whatever we are engaged in. Praise be to Allah. In the words Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. If we make it common practice, brothers and sisters, to do everything, to begin all of our actions and deeds with this phrase, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. Watch us begin to sort out the mischief of our own selves and that which is beneficial to self. So we're not going to say Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, when we're involving ourselves in wrongdoing, not in our right mind, but it is this phrase that causes us to land on the best part of self in every action. Among our husbands and wives, we begin even the act of relations saying bismillah rahman rahim because it is what it is protected in the covenant of marriage look at the beauty of islam this is not a religion for monks and and priests where we cut ourselves away from the righteous good that is in sus the sustenance of life but when we are engaged in the righteous sustenance of life. It is worship in and of itself. Bismillah, Hirrahman, Nirahim. These are phrases that we're repeating over and over again for the practical purposes of actually learning them in our original language. A'udhu billah, in the name of Allah the beneficent, the merciful, ar-Rahman, ar-Rahim, ar-Rahman, the most merciful, like that of a mother, the mercy of a mother, ar-Rahim, the most beneficent, like that love or benefactor that we have or should have in our fathers, that when we, as coming up, you may have had situations where you seek the mercy of Allah, right, from your father. You seek the mercy of Allah, I'm sorry, in your mother from your father. Because mother at all times is constantly, constantly seeking a way to surrender themselves and their children to the mercy of God. Yet the father has standards by which he should be navigating the child through life to know the consequences of life itself. So we say, Bismillah rahman rahim Ar-Rahman is the all-giving mercy that is consistently coming to the believer as though we are connected directly to Allah through the, through the umbilical cord of the womb and ar-Rahim, that when we are doing righteous acts, holding ourselves true to the law, 
of Allah, that we are then finding ourselves bearing fruit, the fruit of our good deeds and righteous deeds. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has written in the study guides, in uh, the will of God, part two of the study guides. He writes, beloved, I appeal to you, Muslims and Christians, all of you, take this prayer that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave us and put it into practice. I seek refuge in Allah from anxiety and grief. To seek refuge, our minister writes, means to find a shelter or protection from danger or trouble. To find shelter in anything that one can find recourse in for aid, relief, and escape. Our minister continues saying, and I am telling you that there is no escape except in the God who is negating your will to establish his own. He is on time. He is present in the world. You have anxiety, distress, or uneasiness of mind caused by apprehension or danger and misfortune. You are in grave danger. You are going to suffer great misfortune and great anxieties because you refuse to bow to the will of Allah. What about grief? Our minister asked. Yes, you will suffer pain, mental suffering, and distress over affliction of loss. You are losing your home. You are losing your cars. You are losing your loved ones. Brothers and sisters, our minister points us to a prayer, a dua, a supplication that was given to us by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad from the supplications of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Allahumma, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from anxiety and grief. And grief. Allahumma, a'udhu bika min al-hammi wal hazm. These two things, anxiety and grief, are great impediments to action. We are paralyzed by anxiety. We are paralyzed by grief in ways that overtake the heart of emotions, overtake the necessary right mind and analytical thinking that brings us to those things that are the right thing to do in each circumstance. If we are overcome by anxiety, it is difficult for us to just simply in many cases say, I'm sorry. We want to build up all kinds of excuses in our minds of why we shouldn't say I'm sorry to a brother or sister that we've offended. We become wrapped up in that so much that we are not building the bond between believers and our families in a way that would simply help us to get not only through our day, but could help us get to the next phase in our life and our evolutionary development. So we thank Allah for giving us not only prayers of seeking refuge in him, but the reality of where that refuge is, it is in that righteous lifestyle that Allah has established for the Muslim. We close in this introductory portion of our discussion uh, with these words from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. He teaches, try today to make Allah sufficient for you. He asks us, will you just try it? In the little thing where you are weak, resist it now. When you are hit on, as you will be, just gird yourself up. 
Allah, I am calling on you. I seek refuge in you. From this that is coming in my face. When you are able to resist successfully, you will produce a slight change in the heart of the person that has been victimizing you to this point, a slight change. They will be back because they don't believe it. I'll try tomorrow. And then they will sweeten the pot a little. If you are just as strong tomorrow as you are today and as strong the day after tomorrow as you are today and will be tomorrow, then all of a sudden, the brother will say, God has come into her life. Then you will, or then you tell the brother, now go and get God into your life. After a while, the whole mosque will take on a different feel. It will start with you. You are the key. Look at the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan with something that we see consistently throughout our lives. A brother or a sister may call you to unrighteous action. But if we abstain, if we hold fast and stay to Allah's righteous path, we become a source of change in our entire society. Just by saying, no, I will practice what Allah has established for me as righteous civilization. So we thank Allah for the trials in our lives. We thank Allah for the trials in our lives that produce a new world, a new society, if we know what to seek refuge in. This is how we seek refuge in Allah, by establishing righteousness, by establishing right action, and in all circumstances, being absolutely free in our hearts and minds to engage any action, because we can clearly say, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, seeking refuge in Him. A'udhu billahi min shaitanir rajim. I seek refuge in Allah from Satan, the accursed and rejected enemy. Praise be to Allah. These are the uh, opening words that I would have been blessed to be able to uh, present to you and those that are listening today. Uh, from this invitation. We greet you as we came. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam, sir. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, brother Imam. I know we can uh, like give you a, we give you a virtual round of applause for that mm -hmm. opening. Uh, we do have some questions, uh, brother Imam. Uh, would you like to take the first question? Of course, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so it's assalamu alaykum, beloved brother Imam. How does one separate the thought of doubt when one does not have comprehensive knowledge? How does one separate the thought of doubt when one does not have comprehensive knowledge? Um, when we do not have comprehensive knowledge of a thing, it is incumbent and imperative for us to seek it. For Allah Most High has revealed to us everything that we need to know, to get us across any obstacle that we have. So if we are not comprehensive in our knowledge about Allah specifically, and we might say, well, is that, can we ever have comprehensive knowledge? of Allah most high. Allah blesses us with what we need for every occasion. So if we, again, do not have a comprehensive knowledge of something, it is the trial of confronting that thing that begins to push us <laughs> to seeking knowledge in that thing so that we can overcome it. Even if the knowledge that we gain from it is through our own very mistakes. So 
the purpose here is to have a heart filled, filled with faith in Allah Most High and to not doubt that eventually, even after we may have failed after a try, to know that if we can say, I seek refuge in Allah, if we can say in the name of Allah that we will overcome it, and that we are not then relying on our own knowledge. We're then relying on the infinite knowledge of Allah Most High to see us through. Praise be to Allah. Huh. So that's, thank you, Brother Imam. That was, that was a timely response. I actually needed that one personally. Praise okay. Uh, now you have, of course, been commissioned by the Honorable, if I'm correct, by commissioned by the Honorable Minister Farrakhan as part of your post to uh, document the table talks. Hmm. Correct? So, Pr go ahead, I'm sorry. No, praise be to Allah, yes. Uh, the commissioning comes through actually uh, first an inheritance of the table talks recordings from my father. Uh, may Allah be pleased with him. Um, I just to give a little background on that, uh, I didn't feel worthy of such a treasure trove of unpublished words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, meaning I didn't know I could do them justice myself with um, the resources that I had at the time. Um, and that had to do with comprehensive knowledge. So what did I wanna do? I wanted to take that burden of inheriting something that I did not know, that I had doubt about and place it in a man's hands that I knew would have no doubt on how to treat and what to do with such uh, a gem and such jewels on trying to give them away to him, he would not accept it from me. He would not accept the table talks from me. I literally, with my mother, was blessed to have a dinner with him and went to, him, to his home at the farm. And um, it, along with the recordings themselves and attempted to give him the recordings. Uh, he didn't know that that was in my mind, but he again would not take the recordings. And he said that Allah blessed them with you through your father. And by that fact, Allah would guide you on what to do with them. So that was in words, the commissioning that he put the burden back on myself and uh, made sure that I stood to the test of that, uh, uh, that awesome task of publishing the table talks of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Uh, so that's a little bit of the background of them. And from uh, that point, uh, we began to uh, transcribe, we began to remaster audio recordings, we began to put them in a first a rudimentary uh, state of just transcriptions uh, from which we will ultimately, inshallah, Develop the hadith of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the sayings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in volumes. Uh, again, we're blessed to have hundreds of hours of these recordings. Um, and for me, it was a major journey and opening of my own heart to be able to listen to these free flowing conversations around our teachings that helped to guide me uh, into the bosom of our minister. Praise be to Allah. So I hope that's helpful in just that. that background okay yes sir and so on those tapes obviously there are some things that you've heard that uh that aren't published and uh so the next this next question they're from the same person but i'm going to bring them together mm -hmm. uh dealing with is dealing with root um that the we know from our lessons that earth is the home of islam and this is the first planet um, so do we know if the language of Mars is rooted in Arabic? And, and the, this person asked the same, another question about the, the, the language and does the vibrations when speaking Arabic during prayer stimulate the mind? Okay, I'll start with the first one. I'm 
sorry, the last one first. Uh, yes, uh, the recitation of our original language has a vibration that not only stimulates the mind, but most importantly, stimulates the heart and literally stimulates the physical body itself. Um, if we understand music, you know, there's a reaction to sound. And we know we're taught that music, uh, light and sound are healing, are medicine. That we, uh, through uh, music, we can also hear different colors. They're expressed, you know, this is a blue mood in this particular music or piece of music. This is a bright song. These are bright keys or dark keys in music. And we see the 440 uh, vibrations that bring us to an A tone, right? So in a tone meant, right? We know this teaching of our minister. So absolutely in Arabic of the Holy Quran, you hear a melodic recitation of the Quran that you don't hear in common language of Arabic. This is instilled within the prayers and in the recitation of Quran itself. So we uh, are careful to say often um, Arabic, the language of the Holy Quran or Arabic, our original language. There are 10 letters in the Arabic language that actually don't even exist in English. There are glottal letters that when you recite them, uh, they bring different uh, tones to the head, right? Or the nasal cavity. They are precisely given to us to not only stimulate our minds through the words that were revealed, but the tones that were revealed along with them. So we encourage all that are present today to learn how to say, A'udhu Billah. I seek refuge in Allah. Because in it, there is one additional letter, the Ain, that is a glottal sound. A'udhu Billah. And if we know in music or those who sing, there's a head voice, and then you have your uh, diaphragm where you sing from your, your full voice. These are um, represented in sounds uh, of what's known as tajweed, tartil, different types of translate uh, of uh, recitations of the Quran itself. And there's seven different recitations of the Holy Quran in the Arabic language. And I'm giving all this to say that it's a world of knowledge that if we begin to step into it, particularly one step at a time with phrases that we understand, that's the key is that we understand them. Because if we don't have understanding of what we're reciting, then that tone is not striking the mind, right? Uh, you might feel good, like we have songs that we hear in different languages that make us feel, oh, I like that beat, but I have no clue what's being said, right? If we knew the lyrics to the song in our own language, uh, that song would take a depth of meaning much deeper for us that inshallah will bring us to what Allah desires of us. And that's to implement, implement the prayer that's being recited, that we begin, begin to be actors of, of those uh, prayers that we are reciting. Because we end each one with a beautiful tone, amin, right, amin. And I mean, when you hear it in the congregational prayer, it's like, man, sometimes you get uh, goosebumps or chicken skin, whatever we say <laughs> of what, what part of the country we're from in terms of colloquialism, but you, you feel something uh, in that joint recitation of I mean. But do we know what I mean actually means? What does it mean? Uh, it means you see some translations that say, so be it, like amen but it actually literally means do it. So whatever we have recited and we have asked a lot of, we say I mean, which means do it. So we, we have, again, uh, iman, having faith, 
that we have Amilu, we have doing Amilu Saudi had to do righteous deeds. So praise be to Allah. The first question uh, there is in uh, first part of the question, there is in table talks a discussion of uh, uh, the language on Mars. It was, it stuck out to me because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in words stated there's one thing that he regretted not asking of the savior. And that was to see a picture of the people on Mars. So the, the savior had a picture that was extracted from sound through the language of the people on Mars. And I can share that with us. Actually, I think it is on, uh, I did post that uh, on a, a social media on THEM Table Talks, uh, you know, the acronym for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, them Table Talks uh, on Instagram and I believe Twitter as well. What I'll do is repost it again and refresh it uh, because I think it's further down in, in the content of the page. Um, but uh, if I'm getting, I hope I'm answering that first part of the question that yes, uh, that not only, um, could you repeat the first part of that question? Because I think it was something else about the language of the people on Mars. Yes, yeah, so it was, uh... He said, do you know if the, the language of people of Mars is rooted in Arabic? Oh, I, I would have to say uh, by deduction uh, from our teaching, absolutely, is that um, you have uh, the language of Arabic as the original language. And I think even in the way the question was phrased is that if that language uh, is from Earth, and the earth is the first of planets, right? Then it would follow that the original language of earth, Arabic, would be the original language of the universe. Um, and we have evidence in the Holy Quran that the Quran itself in the original language of Arabic is for al-alameen, for all of the worlds. So you have the beginning of Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, praise be to Allah, Lord of al alamin of all systems of knowledge, of all the worlds, all universes, plural. Even in the recitation of Al-Fatiha opening up, it should blow our minds every time we recite it, if we take the words to heart, that Allah Most High is giving us in these seven verses of Al-Fatiha a key, a key that opens up systems of knowledge, not just systems of knowledge of plant life, uh, mineral life, uh, different, you know, whether you have the world of mathematics, the world of biology, each world has a system of knowledge. But when Allah says, Rabbil Alameen, uh, not only systems of knowledge, but all of the universes, uh, we, we see that this Quran is a mercy, rahmatil alameen, also a mercy to all the worlds. Therefore, you'd have to deduce that this Quran is taking us, as we are taught, right up to judgment of all of the universes, all of the worlds. Praise be to Allah. Um, I'll go ahead and repost or, or reshare that uh, that conversation of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, lamenting on not seeing the picture of the people on Mars. Um, again, it, you know, it's, it was amazing just to hear that if the, he stated if there was one thing that I, in words uh, would do is ask the Savior to see that picture. And look at that, Malik Yomidin. The savior himself extracting the language of the people on Mars and having a literal picture in the 1930s, right? That the Honorable Elijah Muhammad could have asked to see. What greater master do we have in our midst than Master Father Muhammad, uh, who is now, uh, now being unfolded through our minister uh, to the world to see 
that there is no stone left unturned, no matter how many trucks, you know, that uh, Elon Musk wants to put on Mars. We've already been there. <laughs> you know, what a, what a blessing. Uh, and the beauty of it, of not literally having to physically necessarily travel there to do it. The words extract, right, are very important uh, to the, I wanna say the essence of this question as it relates to sound, that there is a way that the savior extracted this picture uh, through uh, apparently uh, the uh, vibrations of sound itself and possibly light, Allah knows best. Hey, praise be to Allah. Thank you, Brother Email. Um, I hope the question, uh, that answer was sufficient, sister. Uh, now, I have a I have a special guest in here, uh, my student. She's eight. Uh, mm -hmm. Sister, she just sent me a direct message, and she uh, wants to know, as an eight-year-old, make sure I have it. She said, as an eight-year-old, how can we help other children be kind uh, when they are in pain? When they are what? In pain. Uh, what a beautiful question. Uh, and look at the, the beauty in the question from a, a young sister, right? The, the, the beauty of that question is to demonstrate, right? Uh, kindness. One of the most difficult things that I know I have to seek refuge in Allah with is the witnessing of anyone in pain, particularly your loved ones, right? Um, many times we are unable to even confront it, to even acknowledge it. Uh, you know, some literally have physical reactions to seeing people in pain. Um, and it is the act of kindness when someone is in pain that demonstrates the love of Allah God in us and through us. Um, there's a hadith that comes to mind that resonates for me in this moment where uh, this, a servant of Allah was asked by Allah God on judgment, why did you not feed me when I was hungry? And the servant responded, how can I feed you when you're the Lord of the worlds? Then the next question came, why did you not give me drink when I was thirsty? And again, the servant responds, how could I give you drink when you're the Lord of the worlds? And Allah then says to the servant that it is I that am with you when you would give food or give drink that in essence, it is Allah, God himself through us that is demonstrating the gift and mercy of a drink or food to those that are in need or in pain of the need to have something to drink, the need to have food, the hunger pains that we suffer. So we are the answer to our prayers. And this is the beauty of our teaching that Allah, God is in person. That doesn't mean Allah God is in person only in Master Father Muhammad. We are taught that man is God. What a beautiful um, demonstration to have for ourselves to see that we are the answer to our prayers and the answer to the prayers of those who are in pain. So demonstrate the gift that Allah has given to you and I through access to just happiness, access to a peace of mind. So when someone is in pain, a simple act of kindness can alleviate that pain and back to vibration and tone. The touch itself begins to alleviate pain. So it doesn't literally take much from us except to get over whatever barriers that we have ourselves of anxiety, of grief, an inability to confront the pain that we are seeing, 
the suffering of others, but to be able to know that, man, Allah has blessed uh, you or I today just through a kind word, a simple smile, or a prayer. And back to the prayer is what, my, what does it really take from us to pray for the alleviation of the pain that one is suffering? Uh, and those words of prayer, Allah will lead us to a, another level of sense of security with self. So I pray that answered our sister's question. Um, and I pray that our sister's question is also a teaching to us as so-called adults <laughs> that um, the innocence that we are trying to protect it has been demonstrated in our sister's question, question itself, uh, is that ultimately that is what we are seeking refuge in Allah for, is to protect the goodness that is instilled in every one of us as reflections of God. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, sister, for that, yeah, for that question. Now, we, we, we do have a lot of questions that I'm seeing that's rolled in, and I'm doing my best to uh, pick ones that are more in line and uh, have, have the flow. Okay, so I think this one is, uh, is, a, is a good one to deal with. Uh, it's Assalamu alaikum, brother. I should, should, I, should one start over in prayer when having a bad thought once performing mm -hmm. prayer? Excellent question. Um, there's no need to start over, but it's important that we begin our prayer in the proper manner. Uh, there's um, steps that we want to take before we even approach the prayer rug or prayer itself is number one, our intention, our, our niya, the intention. Um, our intention must be pure, not only pure, but just that purposeful. What am I and who am I intending to pray to? And what am I intending to get out of this prayer itself? Um, so our intention must be pure. Our own physical state must be purified through the wudu or the uh, ablution. And then there's another aspect called khushua or uh, concentration in prayer. Allah knows that we uh, are forgetful, right? So we, we begin our, our prayer with clear intent, but the mind wanders. And this is often the time we would be like, man, you know, why am I being, being invaded like this right now? What are these thoughts that are coming to my mind right now? I'm in prayer. I've clearly made my intent. This is something even that I forgot about, and now it's coming to mind in my prayer, right? So Satan comes to us in the straight path. So Hoshua, uh, Hoshua or concentration is very important. This is why we should know the words of what we're reciting. Even if it's repetitious, we should know very strongly these words to keep us rooted in our concentration. Um, and another aspect that's important uh, is something called sakina or uh, tranquility, right? A sense of mind where we're not feeling like we're in danger about something. Uh, we shouldn't even approach the prayer if we haven't been able to reach a state of uh, sakina, tranquility, which literally means in the Arabic language, a knife, right? Uh, something that cuts. So tranquility is able to cut through all of the uh, distractions of the world, right? Where we're standing in the eye of a storm, that in the eye of a storm, we are literally cutting through uh, all of that noise that's happening around us, um, both literal and figuratively speaking. So 
uh, through concentration, tranquility, and uh, our intention, uh, we struggle still to keep our minds focused on the prayer. Now, uh, there is a saying of Muhammad, peace be upon him, that says the parts of the prayer that we are most conscious in are the parts of the prayer that Allah accepts. So no, you do not have to restart your prayer unless you've made a major mistake. And those major mistakes are the um, uh, forgetting to recite Al-Fatiha in one of the uh, rakahs themselves. Um, or uh, really that's the major mistake is Al-Fatiha. There is no prayer without the pillar of of prayer itself, and that is al-Fatiha. There are other things that, that could uh, negate the prayer, but they're not dealing with uh, the mind and forgetfulness, right? Uh, so no, you do not have to restart your prayer if, you've, uh, if your mind has strayed, but do focus on those three things, being tr tranquil, uh, meaning uh, you're not ex excited about something where you're being distracted in the moment, uh, having the ability to concentrate, and uh, uh, the, the third is your, and most important to begin with is the clarity of intention because all actions are judged by our intent. All praise is due to Allah. Uh, the next question, Brother Imam, is when it comes to saying the prayer, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, does Allah want more to add to it, or is the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim enough? Um, I would have to say enough for what, right? Uh, when this phrase Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, um, in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, and we have in the first revelation of the Holy Quran, uh, read in the name of your Lord, that anything we begin in the name of Allah um, is the what, right? So it is a beautiful prayer for all occasions, all uh, that we endeavor in. And if there's any short prayer that we learn immediately, uh, we should learn that in our original language. And you have bismi, which is two words, with and name, bismi, bismi. So when, if we just say bismi, no, we're saying in the name, right? Or with the name, bismillah. So whose name? Allah's name, bismillah. So right there we have three words, bismillah, in the name of Allah, right? In English, you have these extra words like of and so forth, but that's three words, bismillah. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So now we're qualifying the specific attributes of Allah among the 99 attributes that are established. Ar-Rahman, the merciful, and Ar-Rahim, the beneficent. And beneficent, I don't, you know, that's a word that we don't use in common language. Beneficent means uh, you know, something or someone that is giving. So, you know, in the name of Allah, the merciful, the all giving, right? We, we're desirous of something from our actions and deeds to benefit from the goodness uh, and the reward of doing them, right? So, Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. And those two words, Rahman, Rahim, are actually rooted in the same singular meaning. Uh, even though one is all giving and all merciful, they both, if you listen to it, Rahman, Rahim. There's three letters in, in each that are rooted in uh, a root word, Rahima, which literally means womb, W-O-M-B. So womb meaning the all loving reality that produced us to even be here to say Bismillah, right? So that, uh, that root in every action that we would take uh, brings us to that reality that love is the source of 
anything, any action uh, that we should enter. Love should be the source of what we're seeking out of it. Love of what? Love of Allah. So ultimately, we're seeking nearness uh, to Allah Most High in every action. This should be the basis of our intention. And inshallah, we will see the beauty of the reward that we are able to gain when we approach all things in love, in love with Allah Most High. So Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, it's a beautiful prayer, short prayer that begins on um, all except one of the chapters of the Holy Quran. Hey, praise be to Allah. Uh, the time is now 6.10. Brother Imam, we have roughly about 15 minutes before we uh, begin to close out. So we should be able to take between four or five more questions depending on the response time. Um, yes, this sir. is from could someone. I, Go ahead. Can I interrupt you just a moment? Absolutely. All right. So one of the things, uh, just as an instructor at Muhammad University of Islam, now, that uh, is absolutely uh, a commissioned work of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for your brother. Um, and I can share something personal quickly on the table talk since it was mentioned, because uh, uh, professionally, we come from all different backgrounds. You know, all of the laborers have had some kind of professional something uh, in the world uh, uh, that draws from our talents or our, or our abilities. Uh, in a table talk, and this was about a year and a half into uh, being asked by our minister to come to begin to teach uh, Arabic at Muhammad University of Islam and to teach uh, prayer in our FOI classes. Um, in one of the recordings, uh, a assistant of the Honorable, Honorable Elijah Muhammad um, responded to a question from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He asked basically where, where I was, where I was, because he'd heard me in the room uh, earlier. Uh, she said to him that he was in here on the chalkboard writing uh, and he's in another room now. And I could hear myself actually making a noise in the background as a young child. And his response to her is what really hit me extremely heavily to know that our minister is not only divinely guided uh, himself, but the word of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the insight of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, to see down the wheel of time uh, through innate realities is, un man, it's just directly from Allah God himself. Uh, he said, oh, this just shows that he desires to be in our educational department of our nation. So at a time when I was wondering if this was uh, meaning that the, the work at Muhammad University, if I was actually uh, doing what suited my own personal skill sets, this table talk comes across and I'm like, praise be to Allah, I'm actually working in our nation's educational department. Uh, from Muhammad University in Chicago, our national center. Um, and I, I only share that to say that uh, when we are learning things that we are, are today, we're used to hearing uh, lectures, speeches, right? But as an instructor in class, I want to know, <laughs> as your brother, can we take this practically and leave this call today? and know how to use the phrase Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and know how to use this prayer, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajim. So this is like a, uh, an experience for your brother of call and response, right? <laughs> I would love to see and hear everyone on this call. I'm looking here is about, I don't know, I guess 60, oh, that's a good number, 66. <laughs> that um, there's 66 on the call. Are there 66 that can leave this call today comfortable saying these two phrases, I seek refuge in Allah from Satan the accursed in our original language. 
A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. That, as was answered earlier, there are tones, there is uh, vibration in these recitations in our original language that if we uh, seek to understand each word, like we know bismi now, right? Bismi is in the name. Bismillah is in the name of Allah. And actually, that's a short way. If, if you want to just reach for something small first, can we just learn Bismillah in the name of Allah? Right? Uh, that in them, you have in that phrase of Bismillah Rahman Rahim, you have uh, 19 consonants, right? 19 letters that we see even in the phrase itself, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, it's mathematical. Literally every letter in the language of Arabic has a numerical value in it as well. So there's a reason Al Fatiha is called the opening. Iftah, Al Fatih is also related to the word victory, Al Fatih, that we are opening when you hear people speak of. Uh, conquering uh, different areas in uh, battle. It's, it, there was an opening or a fact of a whole new land or territory. So we have in the key of Al-Fatiha, the opening prayer, that we have a key to open really all aspects of our lives and in ways that we can see and ways that are unseen. Uh, praise be to Allah. So I just wanted to put that out there first before we took uh, other questions, that if there's any that desire to begin to learn these short phrases, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, and the last two chapters of the Holy Quran, Surah uh, Al Falaq, the dawn, and Surah Al Nas the humanity. These are chapters that our minister has prescribed to us uh, in this hour and moment. What better way to prepare for the dawn than to uh, seek refuge in Allah through these prayers themselves. If we remember uh, our minister uh, um, really pointed to these chapters in uh, the uh, Ramadan prayer line call. Uh, be, I believe it was in the close of Ramadan uh, for the Eid uh, message that he delivered. Uh, so yes, your brother would, would be very happy to hear a response from the believers. It doesn't necessarily have to be now, right? But I would love to hear uh, this language of ours, not an Arab's language. Please, Lord, please. If we give away Arabic to the Arabs, there's we, we have not been in our, our teaching, all right, at all. Uh, this is the language of the original man, the language of Allah God, the language of the Holy Quran. And I say it often, but I'll repeat it. Um, Muhammad, peace be upon him, disabused his followers that Arabic was a national uh, or even an ethnic uh, language. Uh, he said, Arabi bil lisan, that Arabic is in or by the tongue itself pointing to the fact that it's an original or the original language uh, from which all languages are derived. Uh, praise be to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Thank you, Brother Imam. Uh, so, yes, sir. Um, I think what would be a good idea is following this, uh, following this program, you got, let's go on Instagram and let's, with a short video recording ourselves saying, Bismillah. And Kul Autu Bilahi Mene Shaitan Rajim. Was it the cool or? He got Peter on mute. Oh, he got mute, brother. I got Sorry, muted. Go I love it because that would resonate and echo among the believers themselves, right? And why, why are these people <laughs> saying Bismillah? Well, why not? You know, these, these are the words of Allah. And um, also, if you want to, uh, take advantage of free classes, uh, you can go to noi.org forward slash prayer. 
and, and you can sign up for uh, free classes to learn your, your prayer recitations. Thank you, Sister Jadea. Clutch as always. I, I, I like that idea, beloved. So after this call, we'll, we'll see you on Instagram doing your best, right? Oh, I'd love to give us, leave us on this point with that. Uh, do your best. And it's okay if you make some mistakes, right? Or it's not perfect. And hear this. Did you know Bilal? You know, we all know who Bilal is, right? The history of Bilal, the Mu'edvin, the call, the caller to prayer. Our brother uh, Darren is also a Mu'edvin. So that, that term is Mu'edvin, uh, one who calls the prayer or calls the Advan. He had a slight speech impediment. So when he would recite the adhan, he would make his S, his SHs, right, an S sound. And someone mocked him about it. And Muhammad, peace be upon him, said to that person that Allah made his S an SH <laughs> for him. So Allah made the correction himself right? Uh, and you can't even consider the correction at that point, that Allah has now turned his S into an SH, right? So uh, another one is uh, our hist uh, the aspect of the history of Muhammad, where others may have struggled with the original language, uh, is that for every letter that we have difficulty pronouncing, right, there's more reward for one who uh, whose native language, uh, there's one who, there's more reward for one whose native language is not Arabic in the actual uh, recitation based on their desire uh, to, to recite. So know that there's more reward for it if you're struggling a little bit and that Allah Most High will change <laughs> whatever letter to make it the letter <laughs> in, in, in the sight of, of him. Praise be to Allah. So please, yes, I would love to see that. What's hashtag the master call or the master's call? Uh, I was thinking, uh, uh, yes, we can hashtag talk our language at the master call and we'll at you. Okay, Has hashtag original language. Hashtag original language, there it is. Okay. Praise be to Allah. Praise I think Allah. we got time for about one or two more questions. Um, so, hmm. Explain the Okay. Okay, I think this is a good one. Uh, it says, "Assalamu alaikum, brother Imam. Can you repeat what you said about how changing the attitude of the mosque starts with the individual?" Yes, actually, this was from uh, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, and it is in uh, the key to the kingdom of God which is in our study guides, right? So the minister basically gives us the example of someone who is being victimized by someone who's hitting on them, who is trying to make some type of advance on you as a brother or a sister, uh, right? So he, I'll just read this piece again. In the little thing that, in the little thing where you are weak, resist it now. In the little thing where you are weak, resist it now. When you are, quote, hit on, as you will be, just gird yourself up. Allah, it's, he's saying, Allah, I'm calling on you. I seek refuge in you from this that is coming in my face, right? So someone is trying to hit on you, you're walking down the street, you're walking in the mosque, a brother says, oh, sister, you know, how about a, a cup of coffee or this or whatever is being said. In that moment, when we are confronted with it, the minister is saying, at that moment, we say, I seek refuge in you. Allah, I am calling on you from this that is coming in my face, right? So this, this whole idea that uh, someone is uh, an affront on you. Um, and that phrase in the original language is A'udhu Billah, A'udhu Billah, say I, I seek refuge in you. 
when you are able to resist successfully, uh, you will produce a slight change in the heart of the person that has been victimizing you to this point, a slight change. They will be back, our minister warns, because they don't believe it. And they'll say to themselves, I'll try tomorrow. And they will sweeten the pot a little if you are just as strong as you, uh, as if you are just as strong tomorrow as you are today and as strong the day after tomorrow. Uh, the minister goes on to say uh, in words, God has come into your life, right? So Allah coming into our life then is demonstrated on an individual level. And that person who has uh, brought evil to you, to you directly, then knows that Allah God has come into your life. And that brings us to this reality that after a while, our minister closes this point, after a while, the whole mosque will take on a different feel. It will start with you. You are the key. So in our seeking refuge in Allah from something that we are all um, in reality may have a weakness with, that in our seeking refuge in Allah, it demonstrates for the person, each individual that tries to bring evil to us, that there's a change in you or I. And that change then demonstrates a ripple effect in the mosque, in our society, in our communities, in our homes, that ultimately uh, change the whole feel of the mosque, our homes, or society uh, to seek refuge in Allah Most High. Praise be to Allah. I hope that, and again, that's in the key to the kingdom of God uh, in um, our study guides. Uh, Brother Imam, I believe your camera just went sleep mode. Um, it did. Yes, sir. I'm work, working on it right now. Is it back? Be back. Okay. Be back. All right, cool. Praise be to Allah. Um, I don't know why th this thing is frozen. However, that last, last question, but I think because of, because of this question, this is why we're going to throw this one. This is the last one. How important is it to understand the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to properly see them, to properly see, excuse me, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad mm. and the honorable brother Minister Louis Farrakhan in their divine roles of fulfilling scripture. The honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said um, in a lecture, I can't off the top of my head remember exactly which lecture it was in. Uh, I believe it was in Houston, if I'm not mm. mistaken. Um, he stated that Prophet Muhammad is the paradigm. And if, and let me get the words right, the, uh, if we don't see clearly Prophet Muhammad, we won't see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad clearly. So if we don't understand or clearly know the history of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we won't be able to fully understand or have in, back to this comprehensive knowledge, we won't have a comprehensive knowledge of uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, how he patterned himself, right? Uh, so we see that uh, to know the history of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who historically uh, lifted dead people out of a state of ignorance and put them on the path of righteousness and literally set a nation on top of the Western world. If we do our history, we can look back and see that Islam spread uh, within a matter of 300 years uh, over the North African continent into the Far East uh, that it was just really unstoppable and Western power at the time could do nothing to stop the rise of Islam. Um, and this is where we ultimately see in our lessons, the bottling up of Europe, 
so much so that the enemy had to find different ways to get to the trade routes, right? They couldn't come through the Muslim lands. So they had to go around uh, the tip of Africa and try to find their way into India. And then they tried to sail in the opposite direction and got lost and found uh, the Western hemisphere, right? Um, all, and found us there, the indigenous peoples there also. Uh, so um, in that history, we should then see the way the Honorable Elijah Muhammad represented himself as the fulfillment of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So how can we understand him in his fullest as fulfillment if we don't understand the history of the Prophet himself? So he is the Muhammad of our day. He is the Muhammad of the last days. And we say clearly now, we have been taught up into the knowledge that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is Mahdi. Wow. Not just Messiah, but Mahdi, right? So that is a whole uh, connection to the lineage spiritually and physically to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, of 1400 years ago if we understand the meaning of Mahdi, if we understand, um, as our minister mentions of uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the great Messiah, and he refers to himself as the little Messiah, right? Uh, this is the messianic uh, reality being uh, unfolded in, in our lives and in uh, our recent history to be able to see uh, the great work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the great work of Master Father Muhammad, right? That we are now, now coming into a fuller light of understanding. Um, and it's a blessing on that note. Uh, over the last, I would say, uh, our minister began to bring us up in the fullest reality of himself and therefore exposing the fuller reality of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, right, to us all in the teaching that he has given to us in the Savior King wearing two hats, right? Uh, if we understand this idea, uh, this concept of the Savior wearing two hats, uh, we begin to uh, be able to see that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the Prophet Jesus, if we don't know their lives and history, we don't know the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, we can't see him properly, nor could we see the Honorable Elijah Muhammad properly. So let, let's, let's do that historical study on these two figures, these two extremely important figures in the closing out of an old world and the establishment of a new world. That particularly now, I would really, if there's any other study that I, I would really uh, encourage our believing family to involve ourselves in, particularly while we have a growth, and I would say this may be a reason we see this growth in unsound doctrine creeping its way into our nation, is that when something new is introduced, it becomes an opportunity for confusion to be uh, scattered and planted in our development because it's a transitional period. Uh, we have to be clear that something new has evolved before our eyes. And it is the up-to-date modern name of God, Farrakhan. Wow, the star in our midst. So, um, and this has happened, uh, just even, again, the understanding of this being taught to us by our minister has happened over the last, I would say five years or so, a very short, uh, short time period. And if we go back to our study, we'll see the beginning of it uh, in that language uh, that the savior came wearing two hats, praise be to Allah.
Man, all praise is due to Allah. Thank you, Brother Imam. If we could, let's give the Brother Imam a virtual round of applause or allow Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Well, Brother Imam, while, while we have us with you, um, we would, while we have you with us, <laughs> we would like for you to participate with our closeout. We start with Twitter teachings. Um, and then we read from English lesson C1, no, excuse me, C1 English, because that's different. C1 English, the 400 or so words uh, from that uh, labor is mean that the minister recommended. And we close out with the Quran and just with the theme, I know like it was with La La uh, if you could recite the al falak in Arabic and I'll, uh, I'll say it in English and then recite al, uh, al Nas in Arabic, and I'll say that in English, and we'll close out with prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And first, so uh, Brother Jeremy or Brother Javon, can you take some one? Yes, sir. I got our C1 Advanced English book. Today's word is eloquent, which means expressing what you mean using clear and effective language, fluent or persuasive in speaking or writing. The brother Imam gave us an eloquent explanation of what it means to seek refuge in Allah. Praises due to Allah. Uh, brother Jeremy with the Twitter book. Yes, sir. Asalaamu As Alaikum, family. Um, so we are in the Teachings 2.0, Volume 1. Okay, let's see. Um, this is a good one right here. Um, the question is, can you give me critical steps to bringing my ideas into reality? I'm frustrated. The Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan responds and says, if you have a good idea and you have persons who you trust to share your idea with, then out of that group may come the help you need to bring your idea into fruition. There never was a great man or woman with a, with a great idea that did not need helpers to bring that idea to fruition. May God bless you with the help you need to bring your idea into reality. Uh, and my apologies, that's on page 42, uh, volume one. Then we have volume two. Uh, let's see. Okay, um, the question is, uh, this is on page 239, volume two. Can you please tell us a little more about Imam Sultan Muhammad and what we can expect from him? I am very excited about this move to install him as the first resident imam at the uh, at Mosque Maryam headquarters of the Nation of Islam, September 2012. Donald Mesu's Farcom responds, we can accept, expect from Brother Imam Sultan Muhammad that he will continue to study and prepare himself to guide the community and lead the community in prayers and instruct the community in Arabic and on the meanings of our religion. He is a wonderful young brother, and I believe he will grow into a very wonderful imam or servant of the Islamic umam community. Beautiful question to end everything. Praise be to Allah. Allah. Praise be to Allah. Allahu Akbar. Look at look at how Allah is the best planner. Okay, brother Imam. So uh, we we uh, we will close out with the reading of the recitation of the Holy Quran, and we will close out with uh, Surah Al Falak and Surah Al Anas. Excellent. So we begin. A'udhu billahi min al-shaytan rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد صدق الله العظيم الله speaks the mighty the truth and this translates to in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the dawn from the evil of that which he has created and from the evil of intense darkness when it comes and from the evil of those who cast evil suggestions 
in firm resolutions and from the evil of the envier when he envies. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas, malikin nas, ilahin nas, min sharil waswasil khan nas, alladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas, min al jinnati wan nas. Sadaqallahu al-Amin. And it translates, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, say, I seek refuge in the Lord of men, the king of men, the God of men, from the evil whisperings of the slinking devil who whispers into the hearts of men from among the jinn and the men. Thank you, brother Imam. Uh, Thank so you. I have one quick question. That uh, that two point oh that was selected, correct? No, the sir. Reading of the question. No, sir. That was random. Oh, praise is due to Allah. Praise be to Allah. All <laughs> oh, praise is due to Allah, bro. The master called magic. It happens. He be the God be with us, man. He be with us. Praise. Allahu Akbar. Thank you, uh, beloved. Thank you, Brother Imam, for your time. Uh, this has been a great experience, and I hope we picked up a lot of jewels, a lot of notes. And of course, in the chat, we're, we've, we're, they're asking for a part two. Um, Brother Imam, mm. whenever your time permits, if it be the will of Allah, we would love to have you back. Yes, sir. It would be a blessing and an honor. All right, don't forget, forget the hashtag now, the yes. original language and hashtag the master call. Okay, so we got the um, the hashtag hashtag in the chat, Sister Jadel, if you could run that by again. So what we're going to do is let's get on Instagram, Facebook, or Instagram, wherever you can, you can hashtag, and Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, and Kul A'udhu Balai Mene Shaitan Ar-Rajim, translating in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, and say, I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed Satan. Praise be to Allah. And we have our announcements. Uh, so come back and join us this Saturday at 5 p.m. Central Time, uh, 6 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be beginning a new book. Um, we're coming back to it again. So another revolution of closing a gap, which we're excited about. And it's no coincidence uh, that the email pulled from closing a gap and it's sort of like a preparation to what we're about to dive into. Uh, nice. We are. Have, you can get your copy from uh, store.finalcall.com. Um, what else do we have? Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Jumois. So if you are available, it will be airing at one o'clock live stream, one o'clock. Um, you can go to noi.org. And the message is we take Allah's coloring. We take Allah's coloring. So that's, don't miss out on that. Am I um, missing? Brother, can you uh one o'clock central, so two p.m. Eastern, or okay. one o'clock central, two p.m. Eastern, Sorry. eleven o'clock Pacific? Yep, that's right. Okay. Any other announcements, Master Call staff? Oh, oh please, yeah. Nisa, Nisa, in your prayer for yeah. her, um, you know, recovery. Surgery went well. All praises due to Allah. Please just keep her in your thoughts. Say a healing prayer for her. Send her some good vibes um, and or some money. That'd be great. Thank you all. Something come. I mean, um, that's, if that be it, that's, that's, that's keep Sister Nita in our prayers. Um, and Sister Jidea just posted in the chat. And don't forget the hashtag and all of that uh, we, uh, we have in the chat as well. Sister Jidea just posted it again. Um, so class, thank you for coming uh, as we greet you as we we end as we greet. Assalamu alaikum. I'm a little tired. Alaikum assalam. Brother Javon, would you like to close us out in prayer? Yes, sir. No problem. <clears throat> Attention, prayer family. Aoutu bilahi min shaitan rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world.
the beneficent, the most merciful, master of the day of acquittal. Thee do we serve and thee do we beseech for help. Guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom thou hast bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom wrath is brought down, nor those who go astray. Amen. 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 Thank you, brother, your man, once again. Thank you, Master Thank Paul. Thank you, brother, Darren. And staff, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Love you, family. Love you all. Love you too. Love you too. Wa alaikum assalam. Love you too. Wa alaikum assalam.